Hey guys, what up? So in this video, I want to talk about WYSIWYG editors and um, and also get your advice just to figure out if you if there's something out there that I'm not familiar with. When it comes to WYSIWYG, first uh, I need to explain what that is. It stands for what you see is what you get. So um, when you're writing blogs for anything that's going to be displayed inside of a, a browser, you're writing in HTML. So HTML, like you're using paragraph tags or anchor tags, things like that. Um, but like if if you're just trying to write and not have to put all of your your text inside of actual p tags and and anchor tags and things like that then you're going to want to use a WYSIWYG because it stands for what you see is what you get you write and then it's actually creating the html that's going to be put inside of a, a browser for you so you're not having to deal with putting things inside of tags and when it comes to WYSIWYGs there, there's basically three options there is like what i consider one of the the most, I guess, commercial options of the three, which is the CK editor. Um, and this has been around for at least 10 years or more. Um, it's used by major companies. The downside of using a product like this is that um, the API, I don't think, is, is all that uh, easy to work with. In fact, most WYSIWYG APIs are, are a nightmare to work with. Um, but in this particular case, uh, a lot of major companies are, are paying the premium. Um, to use CK Editor. You're actually um, freely allowed to use CK Editor in your website, I believe, but um, also check a license on this. I'm not an attorney, obviously. Um, but the the license, I believe you're allowed to use it, but if you go to distribute your source code or if you're even trying to sell like a website that, that you own or something like that, and that's part of your source code, you're gonna need to have a commercial license. So that can end up biting you in the ass like later on, later on down the road. Um, so for that reason, like I've, I don't use uh, CK Editor myself. The next one, which has been around just as long as uh, Tiny Mice or Tiny, uh, Tiny MCE, I, I believe people call it Tiny Mice. That's, that's what I've always called it, uh, even though it's not really spelled that way. But we love our acronyms in IT. Um, now, this is a, a pretty phenomenal project. Um, but once again, the API itself is actually very difficult to work with. And it also has somewhat of a restrictive uh, license that, that is um, saying that you can, you can go ahead and distribute it, but you can't actually change the source code. Um, and, and that, you know, also has to obviously remain in place for whoever you distribute the source to. Um, so for that reason, like Tiny Mice, uh, it really is, is the king on, on the block, I think, when it comes to actual widespread usage. And the reason why is because um, WordPress actually uses Tiny Mice in their, their project. You know what? And if it's not called Tiny Mice, I'm setting a goddamn trend right now. I'm setting, uh, everybody should just call it that because Chris Hawks called it that. I have no idea how you pronounce it. I've actually never talked to other people about the product itself. So I wouldn't even, like, I just call it Tiny Mice. Anyway, call it whatever the hell you want. Um, but if we call it Tiny Mice and it wasn't being called that before, I'll take credit for it. Um, it's kind of like my SQL or, or SQL. It doesn't really matter, but. Uh, if you say SQL, then you just sound like a jackass. I'm just playing. A lot of people say it that way. Um, and I'm just a, a YouTube content creator, so don't get offended by anything I say, please. Um, anyway, guys, uh, so WordPress is obviously one of the most popular blogs on the PHP platform, PHP, using the PHP language, and, um, and they, they use Tiny Mice in their project. So, so clearly, Tiny Mice is able to be distributed. And once again, if you look inside WordPress's source code, you're probably going to see Tiny Mice's uh, license in there as well. So... Uh, that that is a good now the the benefit of a product like this is that it does have plugins available for links for imaging um, as far as I know it also supports video and then that leaves basically this is an awesome option if, if you're looking for a WYSIWYG that that just works and has a pretty free to use license and I definitely recommend tiny mice and then the new kit on the block block is quill and I've talked about quill quite a bit I'm actually using quill on a um, on a website that, that I own um, and th this is like, I think the closest thing that I've seen to like a Microsoft Word type of experience that works inside of a browser. The downside with with Quill is that it, it is very new um, and it is somewhat buggy. Like the editor itself is actually, uh, I find it to be somewhat troubling and frustrating to use, uh, especially having to like deal with like formatting. Like sometimes if I'm doing a header, like I have to like I can't just press enter and wants to do another header or it's like stuck in the middle of the page. So I have to like click off of the button to make it, uh, to make it go back to its normal position. But that's all to be expected. This project is actually uh, created by a guy named Jason Chen, uh, who works for Salesforce. It's actually a project that's been going on for about, uh, since tw 2014, um, and really started to take off in the last like year and a half. So I expect that we're going to see uh, a lot more improvements with Quill and eventually this is going to be like the successor to both of the other previous ones. 
Um, and, and there's certainly a market for it. Uh, the downside with Quill though is it has no table support. So if you need something, um, and unfortunately this is a requirement for a lot of people that um, documents exist in like Word docs or Excel docs, they can be in tables and things like that. Well, Microsoft Word is proprietary, it's owned by Microsoft. So if you wanted to, to take a table that's inside of Microsoft and copy that and paste it in the Quill, it's not gonna work. In fact, no tables work in Quill whatsoever. Um, and basically it's a feature that's been requested since 2014 um, on GitHub, I, I noticed. So even the creator at that time was like, well, tables are gonna be very, very difficult to implement. Um, but right now there's no table support whatsoever, which is kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people. Um, but the license is, is very flexible. And if anybody ever wants to, to get involved in, uh, and handle that, then, then that would be great. Another thing that's interesting about Quill is it uses this, uh, the, the, the data itself is stored in this JSON format called a, a Delta. And basically the Quill is reading the Delta to then render it onto the page and everything. But it reads this JSON object and then it's creating HTML elements based off of um, attributes on, on individual, um, uh, individual items from within that, that JSON object. So <clears throat> the Quill is, is a good project for sure. I definitely recommend it. But if you have any sort of table support or any sort of copy and paste where you kind of need things verbatim, copy and paste it from Word into Quill, then you definitely want to stick with Tiny Mice because Tiny Mice at least has some table support. You're going to end up losing some of your formatting and things like that. But um, for, for right now, it's probably the most robust solution. So if I had to pick any of the three, it's going to be Tiny Mice with Quill being second and CK Editor being third, unless you can afford the license with CK Editor, then maybe uh, that, that is a better, that, that would be the, the best. But for the typical run of the mill developers out there that don't want to spend a bunch of extra money, I would check out Tiny Mice or Quill. All right guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day, bye. So this video was brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. They're a bootcamp that is based out of Utah, but they're also in Texas and Arizona now. And they have very good reviews, so make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. They offer courses in web development, iOS development, um, UX or user experience design, quality assurance, um, and just a, a few other ones. In fact, they're even getting into uh, Salesforce as well now. So they're continuing to adapt their courses based on what the market needs are, and major companies are hiring some of their alumni. So make sure you guys um, give them a look. They have great reviews, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.